I learned AI in 1978 when I was still a junior in high school, and um, it's amazing, even as, a, even as a kid, how easy it was to find work. Um, so uh, I would work on uh, dairies and, and learn for some pretty good gentlemen how to do things. Now I actually breed for a, for a gentleman, he, he's an independent contractor for Gen X. And the most cows I've ever bred in a day is 163. And you don't want to breed 163 cows in one day, I promise you. At the end of the day, your arm is just... And, and when you breed dairy cows, and it's what we were doing, we are breeding uh, dairy cows in these big feedlots, they're, they're all synchronized. We, we set them up, we bring them into heat, um, and you breed every one of them, regardless of what stage of heat they're in. And it, and it works, you know, it, it, if we're running 40% um, on, on herds like that, dairy cows are really stressed. The average age of a dairy cow today is eight years old. So when you get into a, these longhorns that are 20 years old, you got a lot better chance of getting them stuck than you do an eight-year-old Boston. Um, but they're just in head gates. You go down through there, it doesn't matter. And I'll, I'll tell, we'll talk about tone in a little bit. It doesn't matter what stage you're in. You put the semen in them, give them a shot of cisterilin and go on. Um, the biggest thing, if you're just breeding for yourself, the number one thing that that's probably my wife tells me it's having a good hand, but somebody will holler at when things don't go wrong or go right. Uh, it's detecting heat. That is the most, the single most important thing. And then I'm going to back up in a minute and I'm going to tell you something a little different now. But if you're just breeding for yourself, that's the, the most important thing to do. We use Estratec. It's a, it's a, um, and I, I completely, I got so busy, I completely forgot 90% of the stuff I was going to bring. It's a patch. It looks like a scratch. It looks like a huge scratch-off ticket. And they're sticky when you buy them. They're already sticky. Uh, you can get them for cold by almost anybody sells them. Anybody that sells AI supply sells them. Uh, you put them on the tail head. They're, uh, they're probably two and a half by five. And they look, they're just a, that's what they are. It's a huge scratch-off. Uh, if you have a lot of trees, they will scratch. The trees, like we have cedar trees. But you can tell, and if you've got flies, you know, during the summer if you're breeding and the cows got flies, they can actually scratch some of the scratch off with, with their tail. And that's another reason. They need to be three to four inches up from the tail set. A lot of people, if you put them too far up, especially um, if you've got a young buller or if you've got a cow that's a buller and she's a little short, she's not going to get her breastplate on that, that uh Estro tap pad enough to rub it off, and what it does, it takes a cow uh, being ridden about a dozen times really well to scratch that thing completely off, and they are bright orange. They're gray, but like I say, just like scratch off. They're the same gray as on scratch off. Um, one word of advice: we what we do is they are sticky, but what we do is we buy the 3M or Craft Spray and spray the hair and then put the, the patches on, it works better. It really, and, and also if you get if you get into a rainy season, they won't we'll come off. Um, there's two or three other brands. Um, the, when we first got in, uh, we used one that had you put actually put glue on. And it has a little dye pack in, in it. And you've probably seen these. Uh, the cow actually has to hit it hard enough to break it. And they're really sensitive because if you don't get them just in the right spot, they will not break. Uh, you know, they can be ridden over and over, and that's why I don't like the, the dye patches. The scratch-offs, um, like I said, the only disadvantage is if you have a lot of trees or if there's a lot of flies, they'll scratch off, but normally what they'll do is they'll scratch off about a half to a quarter inch straight down the middle. If the cows are really in heat good, you'll, you'll we, we check heats every morning and every evening. And we sit on the far the market road and check the cows, and you can see them from four or five hundred yards away. I mean, they are bright orange. Um, and if you're not with your cows all day, like I work during the day, I'll walk power lines, but I get home and I see an orange. She wasn't orange that morning, and she's orange now. Sometime during the day, she was in heat. Well, typically, if you see an animal in heat, standing heat, you want to breed that animal 12 hours after she's was standing. Um, 
And if you didn't see her standing, well, well, when was she in heat? Well, now, one of the protocols we use, um, if we catch a cow in heat, we do not know what, and, this, and we do this with, with, when we set up, if we set up 100 or 200 cows to breed, we do this to every single cow. You breed them, you give them a shot of cysterillin. What the cysterillin does, it, if they're in early stages of heat, the cysterillin will make them release that egg. Uh, you put the semen in them, give them a shot. It's two cc's, it's inexpensive, and it will increase, it'll typically increase your AI percentages by about 10%. Because you can breed, if, 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 uh, if she's in late stage heat, the cysterillin does nothing. It goes in the system, flushed out. If she's in early stage heat, she hasn't released the egg yet, the cysterillin, go, it makes her ovulate, release the egg so it meets the semen. The semen's viable, it, you know, they say up to 16 hours, you know, really the first four to six to eight hours is when that semen is the most viable. That's why it's really important to catch them, you know, if you can check them three times a day, you're better. You need to check them for 30 minutes at a time. Um, some of the new systems, you talk about high, high tech, we breed for an Angus gentleman. Um, they have radio wave, it, it's, it looks like the patches that um, I was telling you about have, have the red dye on them. They're identical to that. But what they have in them is a transmitter. The transmitter sends a signal to a disc hooked up to a computer uh, with that animal's number on it, and it tells every time something hits that receiver. So if she gets, if she gets rode, and she gets rolled for 10 seconds, it takes that information and puts it in the computer. What, they, what the computer considers a standing heat is three of those within a five minute period for 15 seconds. Mm -hmm. And it tells you on your computer screen, that cow's in heat. High tech system, and, and we, we probably have better percentages on cows that are just visually inspected. I mean, if you check your cows two times a day or three times a day, your percentages will typically be higher. Because what will happen, and, and you, I'm amazed, you do not, it's, you go in and you'll see a cow's been rolled 300 times. Well, what it is, a cow a lot of times will put her head on, or, a, or if you've got a bull, he'll put his head up on a, on a cow and he'll just pop it. Well, every time he hits that, it it's, uh, looks like a, a, a receiver for a garage door opener. Every time he hits that receiver, it makes that signal go off. And it has to hit it for a second or two, but if he just lays his head up and down, he's just bouncing his head up and down, or if he's following her, every time he hits that receiver, it, it sends a signal to the computer and says, well, you know, she's being ridden. But, but what they consider a standing heat, three times, 15 seconds in a five minute period, that's considered a standing heat. That's why I, the best way to see a standing heat is just observe it. Uh, is actually physically observe the animal being, you know, standing. And like I say, from that, you want to go 12 hours and breed her. Um, on really high dollar animals, we'll breed cows at 3 in the morning. But with the cysterillin, you don't really have to do that. Um, if I'm having to go out of town on a work, on a job, and a cow's in heat, and she's standing right then, breed her, give her two cc's of, cyst give her two cc's of cysterillin, and your rate is going to be just as well as if you waited another 12 hours a day. The sister ruling is really, um, we, we actually use a protocol when we're setting up some animals, we'll get you, uh, this is a really good system if you're breeding, say five to 15 heifers or cows at a time. Give them sister ruling on day one. On day five, you give them five cc's of Ludulex. On day six, you give them five cc's of Ludulex. Three days later, you breed them. But they're gonna be, in, I guarantee you, they're gonna be in heat before then. You will miss less than 10% of those heats because if you catch one that's actually, you know, in heat that day, you give it a shot. The sister rolling is not going to do you any good. What it does, if it, you know, if the cow is cycling normal, the sister rolling puts all of them back on the same system, on the same cycle, and the five cc's, um, day five, five cc's, day six, and we, the last group we bred, we bred 18, and we hit 12 of them stuck the first time. And that's, that's timed AI. We read them, we read them 72 hours after the second shot. And we stuck that many of them. Um, but if you're doing sight, you know, if you're actually watching your cows and reading them that way, we normally, you, you know, nutrition is a big thing 
a lot of people, a lot of people we breed animals for, and it, it hurts their families. I mean, right now my cattle are in horrible shape. But we keep out mineral, even if we don't have a whole lot of grass, we keep out mineral and we keep out protein. And you know, our cows aren't carrying a lot of fat right now. Boy, but when they come in heat, they are in good heats. We get a lot of tone, a lot of fluid, and what I, what, when I'm talking about tone, if you go in and fill a cow's cervix, you can actually, uh, if you do, like I say, 163 in one day that we did, you can go into a cow and almost tell by the temperature of her body. Normally her temperature will raise two degrees, two to three degrees. The cow's actually gonna be hotter. Um, inside the vulva will be pink. It'll, it'll be a, a bright, brighter pink. But you can actually feel the fluids uh, inside the uterus, you know, and I never thought you'd be able to do this, but after you breed so many, you can. You can go into a cow and tell if she's in heat or not. And within a, a lot of high dollar animals, they'll say, what do you think? And I'll wait. And she's not in heat yet, so wait another day or two. Uh, little lace, and a lot, of, a lot of vets, you know, they'll argue with you. Uh, little lace and, and estermate are, are the two the two biggies as far as synchronizing animals. Little lace is weight sensitive. Longhorns, you're probably not going to have to worry about it. But if you get into um, breeding really, really big animals, you know, 1,500 pounds, you're going to have to up the rate of the little lace to about 7 cc's. But estermate, it's, it's a uh, the same all the way across the board because it is not tiny, it's not weight sensitive. It's kind of hard to find, but I like it better. Uh, it's two cc's, smaller shot. Only thing uh, we use a small inch and a quarter, inch and a half, uh, inch needle when we when we give a cow a shot. That way you make sure it's in the muscle. Uh, if you're only using an inch needle, on, especially in a longhorn, sometimes you get these really thick hides. You know, you go in, you put it out, and you know, you may you can lose a quarter cc of, of fluid coming back through the hide. So, use a little bit longer needle, and you don't use a don't really use a twenty, you know, or a, a fourteen gauge needle. You know, use a twenty uh, or a sixteen is probably the largest you need to use. The smaller that hole, the less chance you have of that fluid coming back out. Yes. When you're doing your uh protocol, are you doing the uh, cedar implant? Protocol? No, not with it. That is what I love about just using sister oil. You don't have to use the cedars. Cedars are really good now. If we're doing a really, really high, and we do some beef masters that are $30,000, dollars 50000 animals, we use the cedars, um, but it's one more trip through the, it's, well, sometimes it's two, depends on who, who the vet is that's doing the protocol. Um, I'm not a licensed vet, but we the, the kid that I work for, I say kid, he's younger than me, but he's, well, he's good. Um, um, it saves you that trip. And like I say, you're gonna, it's, you're, it's, there's probably less than a 5% difference between using the cedars and, and just the cistarillin. Um, you know, if, if nutrition and everything's right, you're gonna, you're gonna hit 70%, 75%. If, if, if you're doing visual, you know, visual, if you're doing, Strictly timed AI, you know, 60%. Um, if we're breeding natural heats, it's nothing to hit 85%. When the weather's cool, like this time of year, the cows are really just now starting to cycle good. The green grass is coming up. If you've got your mineral out, your protein out, the cows are in good shape. Uh, and, and the hardest animal in the world to breed is the fat cow. It's like, and, and how many people in here do AI? It's like jello. I mean, I, I breed some show animals and they are pain in the rear. You get that fatty tissue, I mean, you can, get, you can get fatty tissue around the surface. Um, the gentleman that I breed for or breed with, uh, what we do, we'll go in and sonogram every animal. He's good enough, you know, if she's got a cyst, and that's another advantage to the cysterillum. If she does have a cyst, she's not going to breed that time, but if she has a cyst, you've already started the procedure to clean that cyst up with the cysterillum. Um, but he can go in and he'll tell, you know, he can tell you what stage of ovulation she's in. Is she, was she just in heat? She's going out of heat. Uh, and that way we can determine whether we're going to give them sister rule or not. And, and then we'll do, like I say, you know, 100, 200 a day. But um, if you're just doing four or five or ten at a time, you don't, you don't need to do that. Give them the sister rule. 
five days later, give them a little late, six, six day, give them five cc's, and you will be amazed. Uh, if you do 10, nine of them are gonna be really good eats. Yeah. About 90%. Yeah, yeah, it's... When the weather's cool. Yeah, <laughs> and, 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 and then just, Mother Nature has a way of, you know, I the scene when I went down the right follicle and she's just the follicle and it's in the left, or it's, I mean, right horn and it was in the left. And, and that's another thing is, is learning your feel. Um, when you feel the cervix, go through, grab the end of the cervix, and, and pull the cervix to you. You know, and that's, I've learned that. Unless she has a fold, then you take, pull the cervix away from you, pull the, pull the folds out. Um, but the main thing, we'll take a finger and put on the end of the cervix and let the, let the, uh, the gun hit it and then put your semen right there. That way you, you're trying to get it in both those horns. Um, if, uh, when you're doing embryos, you know, you have to sonogram. Unless, we found a gentleman, Reagan Brooks. Uh, if anybody needs to that gentleman, he, he does everything by hand. He can go in and tell you, what, just touch, you know, what, where you gotta put the embryo, the right one or the left one. He can fill the follicles just by hand. Um, well, I'm not that good. I mean, I've been, Thousands of cows, but that guy, he does deer too. Uh, he made it into deer and goats are pretty good. Um, when you thaw your semen, a minimum of, uh, of 45 seconds, we always go a minute, and you can leave it in, you can leave it in a thaw bath for 30 minutes. Uh, with the new thaw baths, this one, this one is a, a, tw a 12 volt. It plugs into uh, your truck. Uh, I don't have my cord, but it has a cord that plugs in here, constant 95 degrees. Uh, but I will advise you to check them, to check them off, because when they go out, well, that's an expensive go out if you don't know it. It's got a red light and a black light. Red light means the water's not warm enough, or it's too hot, normally it's just too cold, because it, if it's set right, it will not overheat. It'll get to 95 degrees and stop. Green light comes on, your water's 95 degrees. When you take your semen out of your tank, do not use your fingers. Your fingers are about 91, 92 degrees. You reach in there and you're grabbing one or two or three straws. You know, you're not losing a lot. You know, it only takes one sperm, you know, to, to do, a, you know, to fertilize an egg. And, and, you know, you're killing a few because you're warming that straw up. If you're grabbing one out of a canister, you pull it up, you know, you're warming those other ones up. So use, use tweezers. Um, I have to start, I, I'm getting, so I have to use cheaters. Uh, but but uh, main thing, make sure your number of the shower. And, and um, I wish they would standardize the numbering system a little better. Uh, because uh, even Phenomenon, there's a couple other bulls out there that have the same last three numbers but they're from a, a different producer. Well, the first two numbers, or, or sometimes one number, and sometimes three numbers, on your rack are who collected the semen. It'll say 14, or it'll say 144, or it'll say nine, and all that first number means before the, the TL is who collected the semen. The number after the semen is the number that that particular company gave that bull. Uh, and, and phenomenon was collected by more than, than one um, company. So that, you have to be careful when you store your semen. I've got a book that I keep mine in, uh, and it tells me and what canister it in, uh, the number of it, the complete number. But then also, after I pull it up and put it in the water, I mean, it's oh, But if you're breeding one of your best cows, Make sure when you take that out, you dry it off, look at it. Make sure it's what you think it is. I've, I've done it once or twice. It's easy to do with uh, the new the new straws, and I don't. They haven't done. I haven't seen any Longhorns do this, but we're doing it in the in the dairy business that we breed a lot for. They're using quarter cc straws. They are tiny. Um, I hate them. Oh, I believe I hate them. Um, and they're teeny tiny. I mean, they're half the size of what you're normally, you're, what, what everything you've got collected is a half cc straw. Well, you take that and cut it in half, and it's, it's small. Um, this is a 14 gauge needle, and it's, it's half that size. That's about the size of a standard straw. 
a 14 gauge needle. We take that and cut it in half, and it's got writing on it. <laughs> I'm like, blue writing on a green straw. I hate those. Um, I'm not going to mention the company, but I hate those green straws. They're hard to read. Clear ones are the easiest to read. Um, but pour your semen up, put it in your water for at least. And we, when we're doing a lot of animals, we have we actually have a timer. We punch a timer and time it, and it goes off because we breed. We take two straws at a time. We'll breed two cows, come back, get two straws, and so forth and so on. Um, but thought, 45 seconds, uh, yeah, I'm safe. I feel better with a minute because it's not harming it. Um, now, if you're, thawing, if you're thawing a lot of semen at one time, and we don't, and every now and then we'll get into a little bit of trouble with the light will turn, turn red, well, you've got to stop and get your water warm up. Um, the temperature cards, these are, these are accurate, and a lot of people like the dial thermometers. These are more accurate than the dial thermometers. They give you a range. Between uh, this is 98 and 94, 95, 96 optimum, and it, it's it's uh, color coded. It'll be green right there where when you stick it in the water. This is I've got water in here, but it's cold. Um, make sure your water's the right temperature. Like I said, these things will mess up on you. Um, take your semen out. You you dry it with a paper towel. Um, Read it. Make sure it's what you want to put in your cow. Take it. You'll cut the, the top off. Like I say, I got in a hurry for that everything. You, you'll cut. Tap, tap your straw because you'll always, there's an air bubble in your semen. There's almost always an air bubble in your semen between the air bubble and the top of the straw. Cut the top of the straw off. Cut it off wherever the semen level is. Um, because it will adjust to your, it'll, it'll adjust to whatever gun you're breeding. Um, I like the new guns better than the old guns. The old guns, are you still using O-rings on your gun? Probably not, too. Yeah, I don't, I don't like them because when you're putting them in and out of your shirt or under your arm or whatever, the old guns had a sheath and you slipped your sheath on your breathing gun. Well, if you lost that little O-ring, boy, you were in trouble. You go into a cow and the whole sheath comes off with your straw in it. The new guns, these are called spiral guns, and you just notice my little blue, the little blue thing that went to the end of that. What that does is it locks your semen, your straw, into the sheath. Um, and, I, and I've been retaught since because of this. You take your straw out, you push it into the sheath, and you lock it in the blue. You push it in there with your hand. You try not to handle this as much. Try not to handle this part of the sheet if you can avoid it. Try to keep everything down here if you can. That's why you push it in there, push it in with your heel. Same way. When you put it on your gun, you, you try not to touch this. The ones with the wrappers on them are really good. Yeah, and some of them are individually wrapped. Um, in my other box, yeah, they're individually wrapped, and you just cut the end off. Well, this end is completely protected. Because remember, this is going this this much of the gun is going through her cervix, and it doesn't take a whole lot to get an infection. Um, before you go in the vulva, take we, we we keep paper towel in our pocket. Take especially when there's lots of green uh, those dairy cows will cough and they'll cover you. I mean you're covered with manure, but make sure that vulva is clean uh, and don't. Young guys are bad about this. They'll take a paper towel and they'll wipe it real hard and I'm going, no, 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 no. Because all you did was you just push the mirror in, inside of it. Just gently clean it. Um, pull your hand back, just use your fingers, and that volvo will split. And then you just take and put your gun in it. Keep the point up, because below the cervix, uh, below, uh, in the, once you get into the uterus, the bladder is down low. Uh, and the last thing you want to do is take this and, and jab it in the bladder. So you go in, tip up, uh, take the cervix. You know, like I say, when you first pick it up, push it away from you. If there's any folds, it'll push those folds out and then pull the cervix to you and you're gonna slide it over there. A cervix typically has about four to five rings. It feels like a chicken's neck or it feels like a person's neck. And you can feel those rings. After you felt um, a bunch of them, you can feel those rings. Um, the, the beef masters, um, 
you know, I'm not a big master person, or I don't like them, or I don't hate them. They're beautiful cows. Some of their cervix are literally that big around. Um, when they, and the, one of the gentlemen we work for, he super ovulates these cows. It's nothing to get 80 eggs out of these cows. He's burning his cows up. He's ruining them. And when you pick that cervix up, it hurts. It would be like you having poison ivy all over your arm and somebody grabbing it like this. I mean, it literally hurts. And their cervix are huge anyway. Um, and you think, well, that's easy. They're gonna, the opening's bigger. Well, not necessarily. Um, you know, uh, on heifers, the opening to the cervix sometimes is, is only twice the size of this. Some of them aren't. The opening is even smaller on really young heifers. We don't breed heifers if we're AI until they're two years old. Main, main reason is, and I got skinny arms. Um, the, the, when, you, when you go into a cow and, and use lots of lube on heifers too, because they're going to bleed anyway, because you're rupturing blood vessels when you first come into them. Um, but heifers, the good thing about heifers, God, they're fertile. Uh, they haven't had a calf yet, so you're going you're gonna to run into all different kinds of things. You'll run into what we call L's. The cervix is like this, and the, 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 the back end of it is actually pointing down. And, and there's a difference of opinion. If I'm putting real grand semen in a heifer, I am not quitting until I just know there's absolutely no way I can get to that cervix. If it's just an L, it's easy. You grab it, you go through the first two or three rings, and you'll feel like you're bumping something. You'll think, well, I'm above it or below it or whatever. Well, it's just an L. You take and, and uh, just pull it up, and it'll, it'll just slip all of a sudden. And you just gently just move your gun just back and forth a little bit, and it'll pop through. Um, spark issue. Um, now that's a different story. Um, sometimes you cannot get the semen all the way through with scar tissue. If, you, if you've got a vet that can sonogram, typically you can pick that scar tissue up. Um, you know, we've, we've done cows and the guy, he'll say, send, you better send them to slaughter because she's not having them okay. She's got some, you know, he picks up the scar tissue. Um, when you're done, if you're not using tame, uh, like I say, I, I give them two cc's of cystorillum and, and let them out. The, and a, and the, another thing, a lot of people think uh, animals that are really, really, I like Dora Thompson's, she calls them silly. That's a nice word for them, crazy. Um, it's strange. A lot of those animals that are like that seem to be extremely fertile. I mean, I've bred them laying on the ground, I've bred them climbing over the shoe. They really breed easy, but the main thing you don't want to do is stress an animal. What we, we've got feed troughs and we, and we, have, we don't use head gates. Uh, what we have are, are um, pens with just alleys with, with the pipes running horizontal so the longhorns can run down through, the sh through these alleys and they're short. And in and the, and the end of it, it's got those horse buckets that have feet in it. Uh, we'll run them in there, put a bar behind them, and let them eat. Some of them won't eat. Some of them are just, you know, just nervous. They're not going to eat. But cows that like to eat, while, while you know, you're thawing your semen out, um, you know, they're they're sitting there eating. They're actually relaxing. But high stress cattle, don't don't be afraid to breed them. We've had extremely good luck breeding animals that are everybody's fine. Oh, no, she's crazy. Um, as long as she doesn't come at you. Uh, we've got a Gordy 698 that she's hard because she come at you. I mean, she just. She's fine in the pasture, you can pet her, but you put her in a pen, she just doesn't like being in there. Uh, but yeah, don't be afraid to breed when it's, it's high maintenance. Um, one other thing, and I'm not an advertisement because I, I, most people don't know about this, and, and I, I tell everybody in the Longhorn business about it because I like it. It's not a guarantee, but it's cheaper than sex scene, um, if, especially unless it's your boy and you're doing it. Uh, there's a, a sex scene technology sells a drug, or it's not a drug, it's, it's a, a spermicide called uh, Heifer Plus. Have you, have, most, have you tried it? We have. Yeah. I've had decent luck with it. Although the last gift I had, I put two straws in the can. It, it increases your odds to about 85%. Yeah, I felt like we were losing some. Uh, you almost have to, well, because what it, it, you are killing a lot of sperm. You're going from about 30 million to about to 15, or actually it's going to be less because you're going to lose some semen. You, you cannot get all that semen out of that little vial. And um, also, when you it's uh, it's like shaking a thermometer. What you do, it's a it's a little vial. You 
put it in your water and get it, and, and that's the biggest thing, is, and a lot of people make the mistake of not getting that little glass vial 95 degrees before they put the semen in it. And I told them, I said, well, you just ruin that. You know, they'll take it out of an ice box and just set it in a truck and take it out, and they'll thaw their semen out, and then, I, you know, and I, you try to explain to them, it all has to be the same temperature. So it's a little vial. It's a little half cc vial. It's a spermicide, it's a powder, it's a blue powder. Put it in your water, warm it up, make sure your light's on, and, and, and I'll do it when I leave the house. I put the vials in, the, and it's five miles, time I catch the cows, you know, it's 30 minutes. <coughs> but uh, you take a 14 gauge needle, you, you pop that vial, you take your semen, after you've thawed it for a minute, you take it and you shake it, and then you would never think you could get this stuff in and out of this, the way it works. You shake it about three times like that, the semen goes in the vial. You take it and gently, just kind of mix it up, and uh, let it mix up pretty good, usually 15, 20 seconds, 30 seconds. And then you take it and you pull the straw out to the very, very end of that little vial. It's got a rubber stopper just like any other medicine bottle, uh, penicillin or whatever. And you take it and you shake it back in the straw. Well, this violent shaking is killing more sperm. That's why I tell you, if you can afford it, if it's your own bull, and that's when we use a lot of it, so when we're using our own bull, uh, put, use two straws because you're losing a lot. Of, it's, it's killing a lot. It's not killing all. It's killing a lot of the male's sperm. Uh, it doesn't affect the, the, the female. So um, you shake it back in there. You push the valve down on the the straw as far as you can, put it in the vial for, and that's where this thing, you cannot use it unless you have constant temperature for 15 minutes. You leave that semen in that water, with that vial pushed over it, and it floats. That's, what, that's what's so important, you have to use 14 gauge needle. And um, you leave it in there for 15 minutes, at least 15 minutes. So what we do is that's the very first thing I do, and I kind of know how long it's going to take me to catch the animals. If it's in there for 20 minutes, 25 minutes, no big deal. It has to be in there for 15. Um, and it's a spermicide. It's killing the chromosome, you know, um, for the male. It, and it, the ones that doesn't kill, it slows down. So what it's doing, it's giving these little females a chance to get to the egg before the males. But it doesn't kill all of them. So it's, like I say, we just had a beautiful little bull calf that we put two straws in the cow. And, um, but I will tell you, the cow that we have here from the horn showcase, it's, I don't know what, I hope she's going to be pushing 80. Uh, she's a result of Heifer Plus. And, you know, um, it's about $10 a vial, whereas if you buy, you know, $100 semen, people that, that sell you sex semen, it's 250. On the dairy industry, it's eight and 14. They have what's called, what we're, we're putting semen in cows, it's called 90. In other words, it's 90% uh, female sperm, or they have a new 90% male if you want. And it's 15, 20 bucks a straw. And we're doing that all day long. Um, or, or they have 75%, and it's 10, 12 dollar each straw. Um, why, I mean, if, if you collect a bull, you know, they, they're doing it down there. Um, and I don't know what, it, what the difference is, but it's not that much. You know, it's just increasing your chances of a heifer. But this will do the exact same thing. I mean, it's, it's you know, we've bred, you know, hundreds and hundreds, probably thousands of these Holsteins with the sex scene. And you're, you're still going to get bulls. It, there's no guarantee. But it, you know, they're still getting made. Eight out of ten. Uh, it's the best thing that ever happened to the dairy industry. The sex thing, because they don't need bulls. Uh, with the new DNA testing, they can pull a hair from a from a calf when it's born, and they can tell you whether that calf's going to produce or not. If you want to spend the fifteen bucks to have it done, I mean, it's the dairy is yeah, it's so far ahead. Of, uh, it's like the horn, the horn, what the geneticists that come in from California to talk to us. That, yeah, you can do it with horns. Don't know that I want to. I think it make it, I think it take a lot of fun out of it. But if you had a uh, a big enough gene pool where they could take all of the biggest horn animals in the breed, pull hairs on, do DNA, they could locate that 
on the chromosome where that DNA, and they could pull the hair on that calf when it was born and tell if he had it or not. Within 85, 90%. Uh, and that's what they're doing in the dairy breeds. I mean, they can tell you whether the bull's going to be any good. I mean, basically when he hits the ground, he's a dud of stuff just by pulling hair on him. And they're 98, 99% accurate on theirs. Um, any questions? I know I ramble a lot. I, I can talk all day. But um, like I say, the number one thing is, is catching them in the heat. And it's, uh, um, they're no different than deer. I mean, a lot of times deer, you cannot catch a cow in heat. That's what I love about the hatch, it patches. You put it on at night, come back this morning, it's orange. And there's nothing bothering her. You know, she's coming in heat at night. Uh, and, and that's a savior. And what we'll do, if, if she, we come, you know, we put it on that night, come back next morning, it's orange, we'll go ahead and breed her and give her the cisterillin, and she'll probably stick. Um, uh, the cisterillin is just extending her cycle, is why you're giving it to her? No, but it, it, makes, it makes, the, makes her go ahead and ovulate. It, it, it makes it release. It. And it, it's, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Darlene can tell you that. All the tech, you know, the, tech, the technical terms for it, but it it's um, it'll save you some headaches. It'll save you some time. Uh, like I say, when we're doing big groups, like a hundred, every one of them gets it because it's strictly, you know, we're breeding them 72 hours after they gave the the guys in the dairy barn gave them their last shot. Well, so every single one of them gets a shot, and, and they all have they've all been we on those we use paint markers. I uh, just Paint them up, you know, as heavy as you can on the tail heads, and it works pretty good. Uh, you take a, a paint stick and you just, and they have paint, you know, they actually have spray paint you can use too, and you spray it. There's some, it's orange, it's blue, it's green, it's pink, it's, they got every color in the world, and you just spray it up and down their tail head, just as thick as you can, or you, if it's a paint stick, thick as you can. The next morning you go out there, and uh, most dairies have a hard hand, that's what he does if, he, if they're not using time. If, if they're breeding cows in one, say this pen, um, you go out there and that pain will be gone. Or it'll be roughed up really good. Um, and that's a pretty good. But the, we've had the best luck using the, and Estrel Tech is just a brand name. Uh, there's, there's a half a dozen companies that make them now. But using the, the, the glue spray sure makes it better. Especially if you've got trees. Because they all, if, they, if you just put them on that hair, um, and, and put that glue to them like that the rest of the other hair lay down. But that works extremely well. Um, and like I said, you can see them. I mean, but the cows in the back corner, you know, that's, and we use binoculars too, but you, you'll see that bright orange tag. I mean, it sticks out like a sore thumb. Any other questions? Any, and, and, and where to start? Um, like I say, I learned when I was a uh, junior in high school, and I took a couple of refresher courses, but the best thing to do, once you learn, find a dairy. If you've got a dairy close to you that a guy that doesn't mind, because uh, normally what they'll do is they'll, well, on big dairies, we'll do cows sometimes three times at the most, and then they'll use a clean up. Uh, if they're really, really, really good cows, they might go four, but most of them will go two to three times, and they're, they kick them out with bull, because they're not making money if they're not lactating. You know, they're milking cows now, usually 365 days a year. Um, they'll give them, you know, whenever they're supposed to calf, they'll cut them off six weeks prior to that and they'll calf them back to the barn and go. Um, and, you know, God, we've had some of the dairy we work for. We get printouts of where the cows are and their lactation. God, I've seen cows 450 days, 500 days milk because they can't have a calf. And as long as they're milks out producing what their feed bill is, they keep milking them um, if, they're, you know, if they're that good. And I will, and that's another thing. If you, everybody has a cow or, or calf or whatever that uh, usually it has to be a cow or a heifer that will not breed till you wean the calf off of her. There is, there is a science to that. What happens if you have a cow that just is a super good mother? Um, the, the hormones in her body are actually eating the prostaglandins up, and she's not giving enough hormones to make her cycle correctly. Especially cows, 
uh, early on in their cycles, you know, he's like, oh, she ought to be coming in heat. She's not. You ever shot a little late? She still doesn't come in heat. Well, it's because she's given a lot of milk. And, and dairy people run into this a lot. If a cow is just a tremendous milker, she's not going to breed the first 90 to 120 days of her lactation because that milk is actually taking the hormones from her kidneys or I think it's prostaglandins. They produce so much that they cannot come in estrus. I mean, they just cannot come in heat. So cows that are really good mothers, be patient with them or, you know, if the calves on full feed, go ahead and wean him. If he's eating already, wean him. And I, it, it's amazing. 30 days, damn, they're in heat. Well, what's up with that? Well, she's a, she's a really good mother. So don't be discouraged because she hadn't come in heat. You know, this, and, and we did not breed a single cow for two and a half months. Anytime a temperature outside is higher than the cow's body temperature, typically 101, you're wasting your money. You've got a two in ten chance of getting her stuff. Longhorns are better, but you're still, I mean, you're burning them up. I mean, that semen, it, ha it has to get there really fast. The 16 hours, you can throw that out the window um, because it's killing it pretty fast. You're looking maybe four hours, so she better be ovulating just right. But normally, like I say, heifers, long-run heifers, we love breeding them, other than they're really small. Um, you're talking about a cervix a lot of times, it's smaller than your pinky. How they can have a calf that is amazing. Um, you know, it swells up that big. But, boy, if you can get it halfway through, you got a really good chance of getting a long-run heifer stuck. Um, even guys that breed that come to the farm or what I do is uh, I'm poor so what, what I do is, is I'll breed all these cows for these gentlemen and I'll breed two or three thousand cows well they'll come flush a cow for free for me so that's how I, that's how I can afford flush cows is I do I build up enough credits that can, <laughs> they'll flush the cows for me because that's one thing that is a whole nother world uh, I know it's one of those deals you know how to do it I've seen it done enough I could fake it but you have got to have really good touch. And women, you're better at it than men. Women have a better sense of touch than men. So I try to encourage young girls that, that want to learn the AI to do it because they have a, a better sense of touch than men. Um, you know, I've got so I can breathe with either hand. I'm still better uh, left handed because I just had it. But you know, you breathe 165 cows in a day, you've got to switch hands. I mean, it's just, and I'm not near as good, because I have a hard time working the gun with my left hand. It's the main thing. It's not feeling the cervix. I can feel it exactly the same. But, you, you know, you're having to, to take this and try to do it with your left hand and you're not left-handed. You know, and, and when you do pull, and that's, it's like shooting a gun. You don't, you don't pull the trigger. You squeeze it. Well, and when we're teaching young guys to breed cows, you'll watch them. They'll take this plunger, and they'll take these two fingers, and they, they pull it, they, they're pulling the gun to the plunger. So, so no, 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 no. You just put oh, the semen right in the middle of the cervix. So, okay. You do not move that gun. You move that plunger. Okay. You push, and gently, you know, you don't push it fast. And if it's an expensive bull, this is, I double check. I put half the straw in the cow, I pull the pull the gun halfway out the cervix, go back, make sure I'm very into the cervix, and I'll put the other half if it's if it's high dollar stuff. Because you know, that's another thing. But if Mother Nature says it's just not time for her to be pregnant, you're not getting her pregnant. But AI, there's so many advantages. Uh, and I tell you know, I've a guy in Oklahoma calls me once a day. Love him to death. Got five cows and he's got a bull. Why? I mean you know, you can get really good scene on just about any bull that's going to be better than that bull you have. Um, AI, you know, find a dairyman if nothing else, they'll, they'll do it. Uh, that's charged. When we do big herds, we, we charge by the hour, but typically if I'm just doing two or three heads, we still won't charge $10 a head for breed cows. Uh, if we're putting them up and breeding them, you know, we charge two and a half a day to, to room and board them. Because um, I can sonogram with the machine I have. I can sonogram at about 40 days. But the kid I work for, he can sonogram at 25 days and hit about 90% pregnancies. Um, 
And sonogramming is good and it's bad. A lot of people that take cows to sales now, at 75 days, between 75, 70 and 90 days, if you're really good, you can tell whether that calf is a heifer or a bull. And it's really easy. If you've ever, when you've seen one on a screen, it, for some reason, the embryo um, on the male, where the, where the um, umbilical cord goes in, right there, um, middle of his belly, you can, you can see the penal development. It's just as bright white on a heifer. The vulva is just the brightest white. It is the neatest thing. Um, and you got to have a pretty good machine, but it's, and, and people can, and I don't want this, I'm, I'm going to sell this one because I got a bull in it. Every now and then they're wrong, calf will be turned upside down or inverted or something, and they just miss it. But you see their heartbeat, you know, uh, this summer is probably the most dead embryos I've ever seen in cows. There were Angus herds that were probably, uh, some of those herds probably had 15% of the embryos in those cows were dead because of the heat. You go in there and he checks for heartbeats, and he'll say, she's fixing to slough that one, go ahead and move the laser and we'll breed her again. Lots of dead embryos, which is nice to know. Because uh, you can move the laser, get her to flush out, and get her back, you know, cycling. Um, it, you know, vets, I don't know, um, I know uh, Darlene's starting to do it, but anybody can learn to sonogram. Uh, the state of Texas is really good about because the kid I work for is not a vet. He's a gen he, we, we basically a geneticist. I've got a degree in animal science and probably better than 99% of the vets around us because he, um, he worked on a dairy growing up as a kid. God, he's been in probably, there's going to be thousands and thousands and thousands of cows. He sonograms in the panhandle every other, every other week. And it's nothing for him to sonogram, you know, between 300 and 1,000 head. Mm -hmm. And the new sonograms, some of them are even hands-free. They're on, a, on an arm. The camera's on the end of it. You, you run it in. Uh, one of the vets in Wyoming who comes down and does the clinics around this, uh, how y'all watch him do a cow? Ten seconds at the most. And because all they want to know, pregnant or open. And if they're all been, if they've been with a bull, most of those up there, they're going to be 90 to 180 days pregnant. Well, he's in pregnant, open, and they are through the chute. Depends on whether they're keeping them or they're going to the slaughter. And he, I mean, literally leans over that corral. And it's a it's a white arm. It's got a little curve to it, and the the uh, cord and the camera go through it, and the camera's on the end of it. It's amazing. What what I use is a little handheld sonogram. I get to use the, the old stuff that the kid's teaching me. He lets me have the old stuff, and the camera's not very good. That's why I know we go about 45 days, because it's not as clear. The newer cameras are so much clearer. Um, like I said, they, they, he can catch uh, cysts, scar tissue. Uh, I had a cow that had what's called pyometria. Her, her uh, uterus kept filling up with water. She thinks she's pregnant all the time. Uh, we took her to Sexing Technologies, and we flushed her, got all the water out of her uterus. But we don't know if she'll ever breathe, and she's a phenomenon cow with about 76, 77 inches. I got her from uh, Cassandra Cross when, after her husband died. She's a beautiful pasture ornament. But uh, stuff like that you can pick up. Um, you know, cows that are having trouble breathing, find a vet that can sonogram them, and usually there's a reason. Scar tissue, cyst, and, and it's cheap. If, if your cow's not breathing, um, you know, it could be lepto or vibrio. Uh, most of the time, it, it's a cyst, some scar tissue, um, or nutrition. And that's probably the number one thing. And it, nutrition is really not all about how much you feed them. It's, it's more, you know, minerals and protein. They don't, like I said, fat cows are the worst. Any questions? I know that's a, a lot of rambling. But we, you know, anytime anybody has any questions, um, you call me. I, I, I go anywhere to breed cows. I enjoy, I actually enjoy doing it. Uh, 163, I don't. But four or five at a time, if somebody wants to 
Oh, well, uh, Gary Becker, the guy lives near, near us, he'll bring 10 or 15 over. He's setting his own facility up so he can leave them at his place so I didn't have to bring them to mine. But, uh, and it doesn't have to be fancy. Man, I've bred cows and traders and tied up the fence posts. If they're gentle enough, like I say, all I need to know is when, you know, call me when they're standing in the heat so I can be there 12 hours later to bring them. Um, that's most of it. Like I say, I know I'm forgetting lots of stuff. Because the, the, the new technology is just amazing. Um, you can get videos on it now. But you almost have to go to a class to learn. Because what they'll do is they'll put uh, embryos, or they'll put um, uterine tracts inside a plastic bag. Because the, 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 uh, the anal wall thickness is about the thickness, 30 millimeters, of a trash bag. And that's what you're filling through when you're trying to, you go, you know, go in the anal cavity and you're filling. Um, you know, it's a pretty thin lining. It's tougher than I'll get up. Man, it's tough. I don't know I've ever seen one rupture. Um, and that's the way they teach us, through those plastic bags. And then from plastic bags, you go to cows that are going to slaughter, and you go in them and practice. But uh, dairies are, most dairies, you know, we, we teach uh, Hispanic cows all the time to breed um, that are around the cows every day. And they, they can pick it up, you know, in two or three weeks, they're pretty good at it. Um, and we, that's what, you know, we'll go in, you can't go, we make them go in and try to feel what they're, you know, trying to teach them. But the good thing about the class is you're actually feeling track, and you look at them, because um, they call them uterine horns. They call them uterine horns for a reason, that's what they look like. Looks like a set of, uh, looks like a set of ram horns. And when you're sonogramming, that's the problem with sonogramming because the, the uterus goes in like this and it splits and it comes into two horns. But when you're sonogramming, you always, always want to go too far. Well, I pass the calves because the calves are almost sitting under the cervix a lot of times. Uh, and you're shooting the beam about that wide, and so you're, you're going back and forth looking for a, you know, sometimes you're looking for a little thing about that, that big. Uh, a fluid sac is, is the first sign that there's an embryo. A fluid sac doesn't guarantee a pregnancy, but if you see a fluid sac, there's a pretty good chance there's an embryo in it. And then two weeks later, you'll s the little baby will start to you'll start to see it. In 45 days, you got you you should have to see it in the heart in 45 days. So, any questions? Like I say, I'm not good at. I used to be an A teacher, and I hadn't done it for a while. <laughs> I didn't bring my I didn't bring my um, my lesson plan with me. <laughs> Did yes. you do any in vitro? Uh, no, I use, uh, and then there's lots of guys. I like the guys, that, the reason I like Saxon Technologies is they developed in vitro. Um, Dr. Bean, not Dr. Bean, um, Dr. Castro is one of the, the guys that started that, and he's really good. In vitro is really neat, and there's advantages in, to in vitro. You can do it over 21 days compared to, or over two weeks compared to, um, a typical flush of a cow, you only do it about once every 30 to 45 days. But sometimes, you know, there's people swear that when you take that needle, you actually take a needle and you suck that embryo out, they say there is a chance to leave scar tissue in the uterus. Um, but um, what what experiences, you know, I've been down and watching and stuff. I don't I don't think it's I don't think it would. Um, because that's that's a, a membrane that heals itself extremely fast, you know, because it's not any different than the cow having a calf. I mean, they're taking a small needle and pulling it, those follicles out or those oscillites out and putting them in a petri dish and fertilizing them. Um, but there's, like I say, you can sex them. You know, um, the sex semen, you know, they can do it in a petri dish. They grow them for two weeks and put them in the cow. So there's advantages to in vitro. Like I said, the biggest thing is you can you can do it back to back to back to back a lot faster. Um, I've only seen it done a time or two. Most of what we do is just regular embryo flushes. And and every cow's different. And every protocol you'll get, we've used two or three different people. They all tell you different protocols. You know, all, they'll all use cedars. Every vet I've ever um, seen uses cedars. There's one gentleman who uses estradiol. 
and it's, I kind of like it. To, but it'll make sometimes it'll make a cow that's not in heat think she's in heat. It's a uh, it's just a it's a hormone that makes them more active. Is a bit, that's a polite word for it. But yeah, it, it'll make them jump. Um, but um, I, I, I like Estromate or Estroplan. That's a generic brand better than I do Lutalase, but Lutalase is so easy to come out. It, um, most vets don't even have it Estromate or Estroplan, but it's two cc's and it's not light like, sensitive. That's the advantage to it. Yeah. Hey Gary, you, um, I'm all new to this AI stuff, uh -huh. so that's why I'm sitting in here trying to learn something about it. But you're talking about all the advantages, 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 but what is the disadvantages of AI that you've seen throughout the years? Uh, anything that, when you're, I mean, kind of in a way you mess with Mother Nature? Yeah, <laughs> the biggest thing is, for, for the Longhorn business, it's, you have to kind of weigh the options because I don't know why, you know, Siemens $100 a straw, you know, we've got a pretty good bull, and I think 50 is fair. I mean, we sold a lot of one. But when you started to get into the 100 and the $250 range, um, you, you know, you're, that's an expensive game. Um, but genetically, you're, that's the great thing about it. You know, you can genetically, well, the, the cow we have here today is a fifth generation animal out of a, probably a 32 inch horn show cow. And now she's pushing 80. So that's the, really one of the great advantages of it, of matching genetically compatible animals. But then there's a lot of those that are bust just in the same way in the dairy industry. Even though you can pull a hair and it tells you it's going to be something, doesn't necessarily. Mother Nature has a way of, you know, throwing hooks at you. Um, it's time consuming. It, it, um, you've got to be willing to spend 30 minutes in the morning and really. 30 minutes every evening. If you're doing, we run about 100 cows, and we only AI maybe 20 at a time. If, if I'm going to breed that many a year, you know, I, um, if you've got a really good bull, we'll run a third of the herd, or 20, 25 cows with him. And then the better cows, the really good cows, especially if it's something I want to try just to see how it works, you know, you can do that. But it's, it's time consuming. Um, there's so many more advantages of than there is. Oh, business. yeah, there are so many more advantages. I'm not knocking it. Yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah. I'm not knocking it. Yeah, it is time. I would say the one thing is time, time consumption. Yeah. Um, and then it's expensive to get into, too. I mean, a semen tank, um, you know, a good semen tank is going to run you 500. This is 110. Um, the kit, uh, another 100, 125. So you got you got to tie some money at first. And nitrogen, we filled four tanks yesterday, and my nitrogen bill was one hundred ten dollars. Nitrogen score this room. set up for all the equipment. So, um, you know that's that's probably the biggest one. Is the initial setup is pretty steep. Yeah. So for somebody that's running a small herd, I'm not ever going to get three hundred head. I'm not ever yeah. hoping to be there. If I get fifty head, it's going to be amazing. Um, most likely 2025 head. I'm better off finding somebody that's doing it, taking my cows to and let them handle that. Being they're the professional can handle it and know what they're doing rather than trying to do it myself, you think? Well, there's the biggest advantages to doing it yourself is, um, and I treat every cow typically like it's mine. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've, I've been to some places that, that are some high dollar places, and boy, you want to take a board to some of those guys handling the cattle. Oh, and I mean, I'm, I've seen that said, well, she ain't gonna stick. They run around with a full litter for 30 minutes before they bred her, and ain't stick. It, it ain't happening. I mean, if you have to chase an animal, <laughs> and chase her, and chase her, and chase her, and get her excited, yeah, you better wait another 21 days. And that's the advantage. You know what you're doing, you know how you're handling your animals, you know what you're putting in your animals, Get this is this is the this is a kicker. Uh, breeding these thirty thousand dollar Santa Cruz, we're doing the embryo flush, and I'm breeding the cows. Guy tells me what semen put in the cows, so I show up, breed the cow, red five of them, go back the next day, 
because you break typically when we're doing flushes, we'll break you bring them three times. Well, we go back the next day, next morning, I'm gonna break them again. Starts going down his list, he goes, Oh my god. I read I read that cow the wrong hired him. I said, Man, I read that cow the wrong bull. I don't have enough semen. Um, stick this in it. What? Stick this in it. <laughs> well, you've got 20, 30 eggs in there. And you put another bull in there. Uh, you know, it's like a dog. You know, some of those embryos are going to be bred to one bull, and some are going to be bred to the other, other bull. I'm going, are you sure? Oh, he'll have them DNA tested. I said, are you sure? I said, because this guy's filthy rich, and I don't want him mad at me. Oh, yeah, I'd be all right. If you're doing that yourself, that ain't happening. I mean, I did what I was told to do, but uh, and I told told Craig. I said, "Hey, Craig, you might want to tell Maggie what what that guy just." And you know, we're using semen that's kind of like almond semen. I mean, it's some of it's two, three hundred dollars a pop. And one of the bowls was his own, so it, that one didn't matter. But the one that they chipped in mattered. So that's not a that's not a good. Whereas if you're doing it yourself, you know what you got when you're finished. Um, and any time you work your own cattle, I think you're better off. Uh, or or at least watch somebody work them. Um, you know, you just feel more comfortable doing it.